Imagine the outbreak of World War III. We have all pictured what the events leading up to all-out war would look like. Mayhem, devastation, death. It's a scary thought, and with current events aligning with World War I's precursors, it doesn't seem that far-fetched anymore. But haven't you wondered what would happen to the government officials that we would so desperately need to command things like the President, Vice President, or Secretary of State? Well, that's where the doomsday plane comes in. Pop culture has the image of a plane that doesn't stop flying. It carries the United States' most critical faces of government in times of crisis. The U.S. Navy's E-6B Mercury has been called the Pentagon's deadliest aircraft. Sounds like the aircraft would be armed up to its teeth, right? The E-6B Mercury, for example, doesn't carry any weapons, but the contents inside have the power to desolate entire countries in the blink of an eye. If you think that sounds impossible, then you don't know the true abilities of the American military. The U.S. has developed a truly remarkable thing. The National Emergency Airborne Command Post, or NEACP, and it's a highly advanced backup system for when things take a turn for the worse. The NEACP is a fleet of aircraft based on commercial airliners such as the Boeing 707 and the 747. The NEACP 707 is nothing similar to what you've flown in before apart from a few mechanical bits and pieces. This is because the military has radically reconstructed the aircraft to include high-tech communications, tacking, and intelligence gathering equipment. The aircraft has been outfitted to stay in the skies for hours, even days, to be able to provide global communications in the event of a fast-moving outbreak of chaos. Some aircraft in the fleet have the ability to send off orders to launch nuclear missile strikes or even launch the missiles themselves, depending on the situation's needs at the time. Aircraft with such allure and capability have been dubbed the doomsday planes. While melodramatic at best, the U.S. military doesn't mess around. So how exactly do these planes differ from other military planes we see in action? Several different types of airborne command and control planes provide emergency coverage during a crisis, but they all vary slightly in levels of severity and demand. Air Force One was an idea brought to life in World War II, and the thought was to designate a specific military aircraft outfitted to transport the president. Military advisors in the War Department were concerned about the risk of using commercial airlines for regular presidential travel. A C-54 Skymaster was converted and dubbed the Sacred Crow. President Franklin D. Roosevelt was carried to the Yalta Conference in 1945, and Harry Truman continued to use it for another two years. The aircraft today is likely a Boeing 747-8 but the aircraft in which the president travels abroad are kept highly classified, as is the top secret defense and communications gear that allows the president and key staff to be moved away from the fast-moving crisis in an instant. The E-4B Night Watch is more technical than Air Force One. This specific aircraft is a key component of the National Military Command System for the president, secretary of defense, and joint chiefs of staff. In the case of total destruction of ground command and control centers or similar national emergencies, the aircraft will provide a highly survivable command, control, and communication center. Their job will be to relay information to U.S. forces, execute emergency war orders, and coordinate actions by civil authorities. Night Watch is a militarized version of the Boeing 747-200, equipped with four engines, swept wings, long-range high-altitude flight, and in-flight refueling. The aircraft was designed to fly through post-nuclear conditions and stay in the sky for days on end. The E-3 AWACS Sentry is an early airborne warning and control system aircraft. This aircraft has been equipped with Integrated Command and Control Battle Management, or C2BM surveillance, target detection, and tracking platforms. The information relayed by Sentry is an accurate real-time picture of the battle space to Joint Air Operations Center. AWACS provides situational awareness of friendly, neutral, and hostile activity and battle management of theater forces. Sentry is able to detect hostile aircraft hundreds of miles away in real time. It's an all-weather and all-altitude surveillance-modified Boeing 707-320 commercial airframe with a rotating radar dome. 
The E-6B Mercury is of special interest, however, compared to the other aircraft. The fleet of E-6B Mercury aircraft is the most current generation of military airborne command post. Commissioned in the 1980s, the E-6B has been carefully engineered and updated to take on two roles. The first role is similar to a concept called Takamo, take charge and move out. Takamo was designed as a means for the aircraft to survive a nuclear warfare environment and provide encrypted information and communications between key American decision makers. The E-6 provides an airborne element to the Takamo system. The second role the aircraft takes on is participating as an airborne strategic command post. The aircraft has been outfitted with an airborne launch control system, ALCS. ALCS allows the crew to directly launch intercontinental ballistic missiles, including nuclear missiles aboard Navy submarines. The point of the E-6B Mercury is to provide command and control of U.S. nuclear forces if control from the ground was lost or compromised in any way. It provides survivable, reliable, and endurable airborne nuclear command, control, and communications, or NC-3, for the President, Secretary of Defense, and U.S. Strategic Command. Two operational squadrons, Iron Man of VQ-3 and Shadows of VQ-4, deploy from the main operating base at Tinker Air Force Base, Oklahoma. The E-6B was conceived as a replacement for the Air Force's Airborne Command Post due to the aging EC-135 fleet. The E-6B modified an E-6A, its predecessor, by adding battle staff positions and other classified specialized equipment. E-6B Mercury is a dual-mission aircraft capable of completing either the No-Fail Takamo mission or the Looking Glass mission, which facilitates the launching of land-based intercontinental ballistic missiles. On board, aircraft will carry two pilots, three engineers, and nine members of the battle staff at roughly 50,000 feet in the air. Amongst the staff is a high-ranking officer. Should a situation arise in which communications with the President or any other member of the nation's nuclear command authority can't be established, they have the power to assume full command of the United States military, including their nuclear forces. The E-6B was designed to carry through the toughest of times. It was outfitted with troves of extremely powerful, advanced, jam-resistant, and EMP-hardened communications gear. A fleet of similar planes has been equipped with powerful antennas and, within a moment of becoming airborne, will have linked up with each other. The similar fleet's jobs is to create an airborne communications relay system across the United States and more. In the event that ground-based comms were to go down and the U.S.'s space network unusable, the fleet of aircraft will work to provide a direct link communications network by relaying signals off each other and to their final destination. It's suspected that the only other major nation with a kindred airborne fleet is Russia, but that information is not concrete or may just be classified to civilians. Regardless, the system in place takes the U.S.'s key decision makers off the ground and into the sky while simultaneously ensuring intercontinental communications don't fail. There are backup plans within backup plans within backup plans should one or more of the aircraft fail to lift off in time or are brought out of the sky. Hypotheticals varying from the most mundane to the most tragic have been thought of by military experts and war analysts. We hope to never see the sudden rise of the U.S.'s airborne fleets, but history has demanded the ultimate precautions take place now before it's too late. If you like this video, remember to like and subscribe. Until next time.